I'm Jamie Grace. I'm here at Ham Hampstead Town Hall, Central London, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to introduce you to the creator of Nia, Debbie Rosas. Debbie, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Nia, now a white belt myself. Very proud to say. Thank you very much. Um, but to meet you is fantastic, and particularly as you are one of the creators of Nia. For anyone who's thinking, what is Nia? Probably best if you sum it up for us and tell us why Nia is so special. Ah, uh, well, first of all, I think that everybody knows that exercise is important, movement is important, and uh, so I find that Nia is probably one of the most pleasurable and enjoyable ways uh, to get fit. And rather than doing traditional exercise that oftentimes disassociates one from their own body and their own body pleasure, Nia is all about getting into your body and about sensing and choosing pleasure in everything that you do, whether it be on the dance floor or in your life. Mm -hmm. And the combination of martial arts, doing movements that are precise, empowering oneself, um, integrating dance art so that one really feels like they're dancing and expressing oneself, and then the healing arts, integration of healing arts into me, where one becomes aware of really how the body is designed and therefore how the body is intended to be used and basically lived in. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the analogy always is people oftentimes know more about their pet or their automobile <laughs> than they know about their body. So and um, I find that people fall in love with their body through mm -hmm. Nia. They begin to respect the body once they discover this magnificent um, uh, journey that we have in the body, that the body is coded for pleasure and joy and comfort. And through Nia, I find that people make lasting lifestyle changes. So Nia is not only a workout, it is also a lifestyle practice. And I think that that is what keeps people so deeply connected to the work is that they realize that it's not just about what happens on the dance floor for that hour, but what is even more important is how you live in your body and use your body off the dance floor. Mm -hmm. And Leah teaches you how to do that. So you created this with Carlos uh, yes. many years ago now. Uh, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. So mm -hmm. how did that come about for you? You weren't already a trained dancer. I, uh, I had a fitness company and I had hired Carlos. And uh, I had made a telephone call to find out about the martial arts. I wanted to explore the belt system to honor my students who had been uh, dancing with me or exercising with me for several years. And the martial artist invited me to go to the dojo. And so uh, Carlos at that time was the only teacher, male teacher that I had in my company, and I invited him to go. And it was there that once I took my shoes off, I couldn't put them back on. And uh, so then Carlos and I began to explore what it was like to move in bare feet without jumping up and down and still get a cardiovascular workout. And it really happened in a split second. Because there's none of that kind of no pain, no gain, push to the burn thing about me. It's, it's, there's no competition, the, it's your own body's way, is the phrase yes, you use. And uh, you know, your body's way is your, your current design of your body. The body's way provides us a map or an ideal. And uh, you know, uh, pain and pleasure are both signals that, that are very important to survival. The important thing to remember is that the body gives us an instant signal of pain and if we pay attention to it, it gets us back on the right track of what is right for our body and that is to live in comfort and pleasure. So we say anytime you feel the slightest discomfort to tweak what you do and that brings you into alignment with what we call dynamic ease and to a martial artist or even to a dancer. Finding that path of least resistance allows the full potential of the body to really emerge. And I believe that at any age, what really uh, turns people on is to discover their potential in their body. And so one sets their own goals and uh, their own desires, and then in some way kind of competes with 
what they did today and what can I do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be 61 and I know that every single year my goal is I want to be able to do more one-handed one push-ups. <laughs> so, but in addition to the, as you say, the physical fitness, and it is a fantastic workout, um, you say there's this, there's this other element to me, which is something that you wouldn't necessarily notice from the first class you do. Certainly if you do a training, then you absolutely can sense this, this more spiritual element. Can you sort of sum that for us in a couple of sentences? I know yes. it's a big thing though. I think that actually that is the one thing that people notice immediately. And whenever you do something that is deeply meaningful to you, and you have an opportunity to slow down and connect to yourself, and to actually feel what you're doing, and notice your responses, and have an intimate experience with your own body, that in, on, unto itself is a very enriching, and for many people they describe it as a spiritual experience. They're connecting to something very deep inside of them. The word Nia itself uh, means with purpose in Swahili. And when you do anything with purpose, then again, the meaning and the personalization of the experience is revealed. And uh, with so much technology in the world that we live in that can often separate us from feeling our own bodies, the opportunity to come into a class where the teacher says, go inside and feel your body. What does your body want? What does power feel like in your body? Um, I think is what allows people to feel a spiritual experience. They're connected to something, and it's their body. Mm -hmm. Well, Debbie, I uh, wish you all the best for the rest of your tour of the UK. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you for being Excellent, excellent.